Hey everybody, it is Jason from the Texas Gun Vault 2, and I'm out and about working. Uh, but right now, I'm sitting under a tree on a little break, and want to make a quick video. And I want to make a little commentary video about some news that I guess some of the firearms legal channels are talking about and expand upon it. I guess a judge in California has upheld the liability insurance for gun owners in that state or in that city. And the whole idea of it is, is that you have to pay this fee, I guess it's $25 for some type of yearly insurance, which goes of probably, of course, to some type of anti-gun organization. Uh, the whole point of it is to have a fee in order for you to exercise a constitutional right. And I think a lot of the reputable legal channels are doing a great job talking about it, how this is terrible because there should be no fee related to the exercise of any constitutional right. You shouldn't have to pay a fee for your right to free speech, your right to vote, your right to a fair and speedy trial. None of that is predicated on paying any fee or having insurance to do so. However, this goes back and why I keep talking about how we are going to lose our gun rights in the end. Now, I know I disagree with some other uh, YouTubers that say we're winning right now in a post-Bruin world. And I look at the landscape and say, well, while we might be winning on smaller cases, we're m losing the culture war, we're losing the legal precedent war in the big long term, okay? As I said, it's it's like watching the stock market. Just because the stock market goes down two or three days in a row doesn't mean for you to sell if you own a particular stock because that's just a three-day thing. But then if you zoom out to the one-year or the five-year trend, you'll see that even though the last three days it's gone down, and it might even have gone down a lot, in the aggregate, as the whole thing, it has gone way up. So you started back here five years ago, and you're up here, and yes, in the last past couple of days, you've gone to there. So you have to look at the bigger picture. And I definitely see us winning on smaller things. So everyone's like, whoa, we're winning. But this judge obviously made a terrible ruling. But I want to say that what disheartens me more than the ruling itself is how the politicians that are supposed to be on our side refuse to fight. So, for example, now this is legal precedent. Well, for now, hopefully, it'll be overturned at a higher uh, court. But what conservatives or pro-gun politicians need to do is use this against them. So, for example, they'll say, okay, so you have all these things that you say are rights, well, we're now going to tax them and you have to have insurance. And, of course, they will freak out. They'd be like, oh my God, in order for me to be able to speak in a public square, I have to have liability insurance? Well, yeah. I mean, and they can't come back to you and say, well, it's a fundamental right. You can't tax or require insurance for a fundamental right. And you go, but this judge upheld it and you said it was good law. So we should have to have liability insurance for voting. So for example, if uh, somebody gets elected that does a horrible job, ruins your property value, uh, causes you harm when it comes to your business, you've lost money due to taxes or infrastructure or whatever because this person completely mismanages the town, city, council, um, uh, township, state, nation, whatever, you should be able to sue other voters because their actions affected you negatively. Just like those people say, oh my God, if you're a gun owner, your actions of owning a gun affect me negatively. Well, then let's have insurance for that. I should be able to file a claim and go, the candidate you supported and voted for hurt me. But of course, that's unconstitutional. I completely agree it's unconstitutional. But this is what makes me so mad is that we don't play the game like the anti-gunners play. The anti-gunners, politicians, supporters, judges, they find any way possible to take something out of context, to push the boundaries, to come up with some type of novel way of thinking about it, even though the spirit of the law is one thing, they they 
twist it and contort it and pervert it to their will. Why don't we do that? Because if this is now precedent, that we can go into court and say a fundamental right is now predicated on insurance or a tax, then we are going to tax and require insurance for other fundamental rights. And then when they fight it in court and say, you can't do this, then it only shows their hypocrisy. But in court, you could say, hey, listen, this judge says this is a good idea. These people say it's a good idea and it's constitutional. So it has to apply across the board. Now, I think it's bad, but we have to play their game their way. You know, one of the reasons I have said I'm a libertarian, and while I might not be a you know, complete, absolute libertarian. I don't believe in go along with everything like, like the Libertarian Party stands for. I'm not an open borders kind of person or legalization of all drugs. But I'm very liber libertarian on a lot of issues. Um, one of the reasons I left the Republican Party, and I am not even registered to vote anymore, is because I have nobody to vote for. Now, I know what some of you guys are saying. But if you don't vote for the Republican, the Democrats are going to win. Well, when the Republicans get in, the Democrats win anyway. Let's just be honest about that. The Democrats are off the rails, bonkers and crazy. Okay, Anti-gun, anti-everything. But the Republicans are essentially doing the same thing, going the speed limit. They're going slower. Or when they're in office, they're not doing anything to repeal those laws. They don't do anything to forward uh, pro-gun concepts, laws, and that. I mean, think about this. Whenever Democrats get in control of legislatures or town councils or Congress or the presidency, what do they do? They push for more gun control. And if they have the ability to pass it, they will. But even in the places that are heavily Republican controlled, they don't. When the Republicans held both houses of Congress and the presidency, did they vote on anything to repeal gun control? Nope. They could have passed the Hearing Protection Act. They could have done it. They could have done it. The anti-gunners will pass stuff that is revolutionary by one vote if they have it. Republicans can have a super majority and they can't pass anything. They'll have enough detractors, enough of the Mitt Romneys and the Susan Collins and, and the other people that, you know, we all know the, was it the Matt Kinzingers, I guess his name was, from New York, who's no longer a congressman. You'll get those of people that are like, oh, they're more Democrats than Republicans. I mean, it, it's crazy. And we can never get anything passed. Or if the Democrats are the minority, they play all the the games to slow it down and to stall the the, the bill and to um, stall it in committee and all that kind. Of, they play the game. What do Republicans do? They roll over. They roll over. And you can only do that for so long before you lose everything. And that's why I say we're going to lose our gun rights. But anyway. This ruling in California is terrible, but what do you guys think? I know this is all hypothetical. It's not going to happen. Nothing I want will ever happen. But what do you think? Would you support pro-gun legislators that would start passing insurance and taxing requirements on under other uh, fundamental rights, even though knowing they're unconstitutional? Just like the anti-gunners will pass gun control bills, knowing they're unconstitutional. You know, another thing that I think that, that we should do, and I think, honestly, this would save government, okay? I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think could, could save government. And maybe I should um, put this in, in the title, because this is this is the big coup de, draw, uh, coup de gras. This is the big grand finale, okay? Think about this. What if we passed a constitutional amendment that repealed immunity for legislators and law enforcement if gross negligence or malice can be proven in court. So for example, if a 
legislature or a legislator writes a bill that is not just, eh, might be kind of unconstitutional, might be constitutional, somewhere in the gray area, but literally writes a bill that is so over the top unconstitutional that it is gross negligence of their duty that they can be held civilly liable, meaning the citizens of the jurisdiction in which they represent. So if they're a national politician, the whole nation, every every person, every, every city, could civilly sue them, and they can't be held um, immune. They can't say, well, I was doing it in the, uh, uh, in the service of my job. They can't do that. Same thing, thing, thing for cops. That... I mean, there's always that stuff in, in in the gray area where you go, man, you know, I mean, I know cops have a hard job, okay? And I'm not, I mean, it has to be totally gross negligence. Like, like it's shown on body camera where they, they pull over a little old lady going 52 miles an hour, okay? And so she's polite to them. And for some reason, they got something up their butt. And they're like, we're gonna we're gonna make an example of this, and it shows that she's polite, they're rude, they take her in and they they harass her, that kind of stuff. They should be held civilly liable, even and, and they can't hide behind we're just doing our job or civil immunity. Uh, but the same thing for a poli for a, for a politicians, but it has to be gross negligence, because obviously there is that gray area legal. You know, uh, it could go one way or or the other. We've all seen bills that might be or not be, um, or uh, law enforcement officers where a stop is, eh, it, it, it could go one way or, or the other. Um, you know, a good uh, example was, I remember watching this, uh, one of the YouTube channels I watch is called, I think it's Audit the Audit. And they're a YouTube channel where they go through footage of uh, police interactions. And sometimes they're like, yeah, the police are totally, while they may look and act like jerks, they're totally in their legal right. It was justified, uh, whether it was an arrest or the way they interacted with a person or the questions that they asked, completely justified. And this guy is like, yeah, it's, it's, it's completely right. They were in their, uh, you know, everything went by the, by the, by the book. But then there's other interactions where if one, one I'm thinking about, uh, personally is where there was this man that was legally blind and he was walking down the road and he had a, a one of those folding canes in his back pocket and he was walking home actually from from jury duty and a female police officer stops him and says we got a report that you're walking down the road with a firearm in your back pocket and he shows them it's a walking cane and he says i'm legally blind I can't, you know, I, I guess he could see to a certain certain degree, but for legal purposes, he couldn't drive. He was legally blind. He pulled it out of his pocket. You could clearly see it on the body cam. It was a walking device. It was not a firearm in any way. He even walked by the cops. There was no, but and then she became, because the guy, the way that he interacted with her, she became belligerent ended up detaining him. He never broke any law. He and, and then he was not, he followed all of their rules. Now, of course, he was talking back a little bit, but he didn't run away or any of that. Uh, when they handcuffed him to do an investigation, he didn't, there was no um, fighting or any of that. And uh, yeah, he gave him some lip, but he was well within his right. He didn't do anything. They arrested him and after detaining and took all of his stuff, I believe not only should he be able to sue the police department, he should be able to sue that cop in court because that was over the top, gross abuse of power over the top. And I think the same thing should be held for uh, politicians. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think, think about that idea? Because then when these politicians create these rabid anti-gun laws that get thrown out in court, go, no, you can't do that. Then you can come back to them and sue them personally. And it would make them think before they try to write or pass some bill. So anyway, I know this is all hypothetical. None of it's going to happen, but it's just something that I kind of think about from time to time. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. And what do you guys think about this terrible ruling out of California? So as always, thanks for watching.